Welcome back guys. In this part, we are going to explore the human village and a few maps around it. On the way to the forest of magic, of course. I think it's something wrong with her head. Yeah. It would be good if there was a picture here for Marisa drawing a map, but well, we can't have everything. And here's her map. In the co oh, in the course of this game, we'll be visiting every single one of these areas except for Higan and Bugankan. Those two are sort of optional areas, but I'll go through them eventually. So as you explore the world in this game, your random encounters will be in small kadermas like that. If you touch them or they touch you, you'll get into a random encounter. Because this is a unique case, because it's your first encounter, I'm not skipping it, but in the future I'll be skipping all random encounters, except for a select few, which are useful for grinding. In those, I would try to illustrate how I grind, but for the rest you'll just have to think about it yourself. And that's your first encounter done. Now, patch a little new spell last level, Princess Undine. That will be your single target healing spell. And that's the second battle which I skipped. After that battle, you would most likely won't have enough energy left for another battle, so you should hurry up and go to the human village. You might want to remember this house. And for some reason, we can walk through those trees like that. Weird game mechanics, right? And well, welcome to human village! The human village serves as a sort of a main hub for the game. You will find yourself coming back here often to restock on items, get new weapons, armor, some accessories, and side quests. And here we have the mayor's house which is largely useless except for side quests, which are not available now so we are skipping it. But this next house is much more important because it's where we can rest. And as usual like any other RPG game, we would be looting the entire area of every chest we have. Two beds, huh? Kinda makes you wonder what they are doing when they are sleeping. And here we will get our first side quest. Which we would accomplish over the course of the storyline. So there's no really no need to get out of your way to complete this side quest. And here's our first side quest. As you can see, side quests have a full stop in front of their name, so 
you'll be able to distinguish them easily from the main quest. Now that that's done, let's go on to this next house, which is locked for some reason. It'll be unlocked later, but let's go on first to the human village school. And here we have a little extra. This child, Tao Zi, has obtained some hard maths problem that no one can solve. Except for maybe us. Although seriously, you won't be able to solve this without guessing the answer out. Unless you're really smart, but I don't know. This Ayaya is not Aya, just to clarify. Although you'll meet both of them, you'll meet this Ayaya way later into the game, well after all the optional side quests. And here's the math problem. Hopefully your first reaction would be like Marisa's. Like I said earlier, you won't be able to guess the answer out easily. So I'll just give you the answer. The answer is actually given when you meet Ayaya, but that requires you to play the game once. So yeah. And here Moko will explain why the answer is twenty. And, well, the paper reacts to the correct answer. And for some reason, this Ayaya knows that the one to solve this sequences problem would be Marisa. Weird, huh? And as a reward for this, you'll get some items for forging. And now that that's done, let's go on to the next house. This next house is Akyu's house. And she's out, and there's nothing to loot, so we are leaving. It's a boring place. Although it's needed for one side quest. Here's the more interesting part of the human village, the weapon and armor shop. Well, there's a toy sword up here, which you could sell for some money. And here's the armor seller. As you can see, most of these equipments are far more superior to what you have now, but you won't have the money to afford all of them. And seriously, you would want to save at least $600. This is the weapon guy. And the same thing, most of these items are far better than what you have now, but you won't have the money, and you really want that save $600. You will know why later. This is the wine cellar, which is unfortunately also used for a side quest, so we are leaving. 
Next is the item shop. And here we see Tenchi. And Tevi. I hope I pronounced her name right. I don't know. Davy's true purpose is, well, just to scam you. She will scam all your money. So try your best to not talk to her when you see her in the item shop. And now that that's over, you can finally buy some items. I would totally buy her if you get what I mean. Although you can't. You would want one supernatural border water for the next boss fight. And maybe some phoenix eggs and a bit of pot. But as usual, try to keep $600 for later. And this is the accessory shop although the sign says item and that's mostly everything in human village okay i've skipped to outside the village because we are going to our next destination which is the sparrow stand when exploring this map you would want to look out for the enemy encounter that has two cats and one jaderma those are quite dangerous for now And if you notice, after my last level up, which was skip, I forgot to add my stat points. Always make it a good habit to add your stat points immediately after you level up. Who knows, it might save you. And here is the Path of Night Blindness, which for some reason isn't translated. And here is the Sparrow Stand. Hi Mistia. And this is why I ask all of you to save $600 so that you can purchase a spell card Midnight Chorus Master for Marisa. It will be one of your most useful spell cards early game. Firefly Phenomenon attacks all characters including your party members and Guessing Garden is just too expensive right now. With Midnight Chorus Master, you will be able to deal with the enemy encounters early game much more easily because it's quite a powerful skill and now that that's done we are going to go on to the forest of magic which is north of this map however before you enter i would strongly suggest getting your characters to level 5 so that you'll be able to learn a mobbing skill except for flan and I think I'll stop here for now. I'll see you on in the next part where we explore the Forest of Magic. <laughs>